This is going to be the seventh day Adventists versus the King James Bible. What do the seventh day Adventists say compared to what the King James Bible says? And I hope that any seventh day Adventist will prayerfully consider what I say in this and consider that maybe you're wrong, just like I did when studying this and considered, well, maybe the seventh day Adventists are right. See, any time that you study a certain subject, you want to approach it with the attitude, well, maybe I'm wrong because I'm not right on everything because I'm not God. So there are some places that we could be wrong. But I believe that the Seventh-day Adventists are against what the King James Bible says. And the first reason is we are born-again believers in the New Testament. We aren't Old Testament Jews under the law. In Galatians 3.28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, since we aren't Jews, we don't require a sign. And in the Bible, it talks about the Jews in 1 Corinthians 1.22, and it says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So in Galatians 3.28, it says we're neither Jew nor Greek if we're in Christ Jesus. And in 1 Corinthians 1.22, it says the Jews require a sign. Just like Moses had to give signs to the children of Israel to prove that he was God's man, the Sabbath is a sign between God and the nation of Israel, and it has absolutely nothing to do with born-again believers in the body of Christ. In Ezekiel 20 and verse 12, it says, Moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them. Notice that, to be a sign. The Jews require a sign. To be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. And then Exodus 31.13 says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So the Jews under the law and any Jewish, Jewish proselyte kept the Sabbath. However, born-again believers today are not required to keep the Sabbath. And if you read in Colossians 2.16, Paul says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. So Paul mentions several of the commands that we should continue to keep in his epistles, but the Sabbath day isn't one of them. And then in Colossians 2.16, he says, Let no man judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. But he mentions all the other commandments. In Romans 13.8-9, through 9, he says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So Paul never tells anybody to keep the Sabbath, because Sabbath keeping was a sign between God and the nation of Israel. And since we are New Testament born-again believers, and we're not Old Testament Jews under the law that require a sign, we don't keep the Sabbath. And now number two, I want to talk about Sabbath keeping comes back again. And this is another reason why people get confused about the Sabbath, is because it talks about the Sabbath being in the future. But just because it's coming back again in the future doesn't mean we're presently keeping the Sabbath right now. But the Sabbath does come back again during the time of Jacob's trouble. And notice I said time of Jacob's trouble because, like I said, it's for the Jews. And the time of Jacob's trouble is for the Jew. And the church, the body of Christ, which is all born-again believers, will leave out in a rapture before the time of Jacob's trouble starts. That's another reason, I believe, that the church leaves is because we don't keep the Sabbath and they're going to be keeping it again 
in the future time period. And God will once again be primarily dealing with the Jews instead of the church. And that is why it is the time of Jacob's trouble. And, and I have proof of this with scripture in Matthew 24, 19 through 21, where Jesus Christ is talking to the disciples about what shall be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. He's telling this to the Jewish disciples. And he says, And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So if we don't keep the Sabbath, and these people are going to pray that their flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, that shows that there's somebody in the probably near future who's going to keep the Sabbath, and it's going to be the Jews. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of this world, to this time known or ever shall be. So failure to rightly divide will result in putting these verses on yourself today. But the context of Matthew 24 was the Lord Jesus Christ talking to the disciples about the end of the world. And he is referring to a time when God will be dealing with Israel during the time of Jacob's trouble. And that verse I said in Colossians 2.16, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now watch what this next verse says, if you still doubt that the Sabbath is coming back. It says, Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So it's coming back again. And the Sabbath days, notice they're said to be a shadow of things to come. So you have it coming back after the church leaves in a rapture. And you also have it during the millennial reign. In Isaiah 66, 23, talking about the millennium, it says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. But next, the third thing I want to talk about is the Seventh-day Adventists will pervert the simple gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And back in Paul's day, men were using circumcision to keep people under a God works gospel. And the Seventh-day Adventists use the Sabbath today. They go as far as teaching that if you attend a church on Sunday, that you are taking the mark of the beast. And if you read about the mark of the beast in Revelation 14, 9 through 11, it says this, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The mark of the beast in the Bible is a key thing because it lets you know where a Bible teacher stands when he tells you what he believes about the mark of the beast. The Bible plainly says that anybody who takes the mark is going to hell. And if the Seventh-day Adventists believe that breaking the Sabbath or going to church on Sunday instead of Saturday is taking the mark of the beast, then they're teaching a works gospel because knowingly or unknowingly they're saying that a person will go to hell for breaking the Sabbath. And the S. DAs, the Seventh-day Adventists, may or name, may not believe Sabbath breakers are lost. But by calling Sunday church attendance the mark of the beast, they put all Sabbath breakers in hell. And the verses in Revelation 14 clearly teach that a man who takes the mark of the beast goes to hell. You have to deny the verse to say otherwise. And we aren't saved or kept saved by keeping any part of the law today. Romans 10, 3 and 4 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. The law, keeping the law could never save anybody. Uh, it never gave anybody righteousness to get them eternal salvation. Eternal salvation only came and only comes through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, getting 
the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ applied to your soul. You get the Lord Jesus Christ imputed righteousness when you believe the gospel. But they're ignorant of God's righteousness and they're going about to establish their own righteousness. Romans 4, 5 through 6 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. It's just basic Bible doctrine that teaches we aren't saved or kept saved by works or doing good things. And you can go to church on Saturday, but that doesn't really mean you're keeping the Sabbath like they did in the Bible. And the Seventh-day Adventists don't even know for sure that they're saved themselves, even though the Bible says you can know. In 1 John 5.13, John says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And the SDAs, Seventh-day Adventists, believe in what's called investigative judgment. A fairy tale judgment that professed Christians are supposedly going through where the Lord picks which ones are worthy of eternal life with Him forever. And this contradicts clear scripture that I've already shown. Uh, no one can live a good enough life to be considered worthy, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we need the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ applied to our record. Jesus Christ is the only one worthy. He died for us. He was made sin for us. And by believing on him, we are made worthy because we get his shed blood applied to us. He made peace by the blood of his cross and whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And once you believe the gospel, uh, there's, there's no more consideration about whether you're going to heaven or hell. Once you believe the gospel and you're born again, you're going to heaven when you die, no matter what, you're going to go out in a rapture if you're still alive during the rapture, no matter what, and you're sealed into the day of redemption, no matter what. Uh, God already decided that anybody who gets in Christ is saved. Anybody. Anybody can get in Christ, and anybody who does get in Christ, God's already decided that anybody who's in Christ is going to heaven. God doesn't decide who gets in Christ. It's every man's free will. But anybody who does get in Christ by believing the gospel, God already decided that they're going to heaven when they die. And next I want to say New Testament Christians met on the first day of the week when you read the New Testament. In Acts 20 and verse 7, it says, And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. So notice it says, and upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread, and Paul preached, and uh, he preached a long time until midnight. So here you see believers meeting and even preaching on the first day of the week. And this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So did Paul take the mark of the beast? Of course not. The Antichrist isn't even here to, to have the mark out yet. Uh, Romans 14.5 says, One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind when he meets with other believers. It really isn't the day that's important, but that you actually do it is important. Uh, Sunday isn't the Sabbath, but it's a good day to meet. The New, New Testament Christians did it in the Bible, and Jesus Christ resurrected on the first day of the week. Sunday is the day most people are off work, so it's a good day to meet. But just because you don't meet in a church building on Saturday doesn't mean you're in sin. Uh, what does a church building have to do with the Sabbath day anyway? Uh, unless I'm missing something, the Sabbath wasn't about attending a Seventh-day Adventist church on Saturday. Uh, you really weren't even supposed to travel on the Sabbath. According to Exodus 16:29, it says, See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, 
Therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. And let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. They also break instructions, the Seventh-day Adventists, if they're supposedly keeping the Sabbath, they break instructions when they cook on the Sabbath. It says in Exodus 35, 3, You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And a guy couldn't even go pick up sticks on the Sabbath. In Numbers fifteen thirty three, it says, And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and all the congregation, and that guy died for picking up sticks. Proof that we're living in a different time and living in a time when God is dealing with his people differently than he was back during those Sabbath-keeping days is seen clearly in, in verses like Exodus thirty-one fourteen, where he says, You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. So do we put Sabbath breakers to death today? Certainly not. This shows that even if we were trying to keep the Sabbath, it could never be like it was in the Old Testament for the nation of Israel. The Sabbath keeping has and always been, uh, and God rested on the seventh day back in Genesis, but no one was required to teach the Sabbath until God told Moses about it. So that means Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham and everyone else in the book of Genesis, they didn't even keep the Sabbath. If you read in Nehemiah nine thirteen and 14, it says, Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments, and true laws, and good statutes, and commandments, and madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws, now notice this, about the hand of Moses, thy servant. So people weren't even keeping the Sabbath until Moses came along. So there was no Sabbath keeping. And even in Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham's day. But then God gave it to Moses and Israel as a sign. Then when Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and resurrected, God began dealing with the church the body of Christ, and plainly shows us that we aren't Israel and obviously don't keep the Sabbath. But, as I said before, the Sabbath is coming back again in the future, and God will once again be dealing with the nation of Israel. So you see, the Bible is simple. You just have to rightly divide. You can't go back in the Old Testament and th take things that are for Israel and put them on the church today. Just like you can't go and take things that are directed towards the time of Jacob's trouble and put that on us today. And the Old Testament does have doctrine in it for us. Don't mistake what I'm saying. And it also is for our learning, as is the book of Revelation and Hebrews, Hebrews through Revelation. Uh, I don't, many people believe that I just take Romans and Philemon as doctrine. That's not true. Now, I do believe those are primarily doctrine for us today but also believe we can find doctrine in all the Bible. But what I don't believe in is taking verses that are for Israel and putting them on me and, and taking verses for us today and putting them on people in the time of Jacob's trouble. I just believe in rightly dividing. For example, no one is sacrificing an animal today. And no one says anything about that. No, Everybody believes that that's Old Testament doctrine for the Jews that were back then, not for today. So you have to rightly divide. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And no one is keeping the Sabbath Truly today. A man couldn't even pick up sticks on the Sabbath day. Let alone get in his car, drive to a church building with his Sunday best on, and, and do all the things that the Seventh-day Adventists do on Saturday and claim to be keeping the Sabbath. So it's nothing more than people adding works to the gospel. So I believe the Seventh-day Adventists to be a false religious cult. 
And I hope and pray that any Seventh-day Adventist who may be watching this will realize the truth and believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And Paul says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And Paul also says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 3, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So anyone who wants to be saved needs to realize their guilt of sin and come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner they are and believe the gospel. Jesus Christ died. He died for you, for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And if you will put your trust in that, you can be saved. And any works you do after salvation, good or bad, have absolutely nothing to do with your salvation. Your salvation only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. But this has been Seventh-day Adventist versus the King James Bible.